Hi everyone. Uh, it's my first time at LUG this year. I just joined Intel four months ago, uh, but I did intern with uh, VanCloud two years ago. So I know I know some of the folks here already. Uh, so primarily, what we have what we have uh, started out was with a small experiment to uh, you know to make MapReduce work with Lustre. Um, because there is increasing interest in big data, you know, in enterprise as well as in HPC. So uh, this is just, you know, a brief agenda. I'll start with the uh, little intro of Hadoop. I think, uh, you know, most people already know Hadoop. It's, you know, it's like a buzzword going around. Uh, so, so to introduce Hadoop, it's it's basically the framework that you know most big companies like Google, uh, Yahoo, Amazon, and a lot of other, you know, big and small companies actually used to process large amounts of data, you know, uh, like really petabytes and petabytes of information, uh, especially stuff they, uh, you know, track. When, when they track their users online, that's what they do with the data. They pass it through Hadoop. Uh, it's basically a very simple programming model. You have, uh, it's functional. You have two functions, map and reduce. Uh, you, uh, you feed your raw data into a map function. Uh, it does some processing with it, emits a key value pair, uh, the framework then hands over this uh, intermediate key value pair uh, to the reduce function, which uh, gives you your final output. So it's a very simple framework, but and all the complexity is actually hidden by uh, Hadoop, uh, which is which is you know which does most of the heavy lifting. Uh, it comes with its own uh, user space file system called uh, Hadoop Distributed File System. Um, it's essentially it's uh, it basically is a layer on top of uh, you know the. Uh, the local disks of each node. Uh, and yes, one of the advantages of Hadoop is that, you know, most, most of the companies uh, run it on commodity clusters, uh, like really, you know, low-cost, low-end hardware. Mm, so yeah, so this is, this is like the basic execution of a typical MapReduce program. Uh, it's pretty simple enough. Uh, the, in, you know, the framework splits the input logically, uh, feeds each mapper. Uh, the mappers process the data, and finally the framework actually shuffles it. So in the shuffle phase, uh, the output of each mapper is sent to the input of each reducer, uh, and finally the reducers, you know, they give you the output. So, uh, so what was the motivation in using, uh, you know, in trying to run Hadoop on Lustre file system? So. Uh, you know, HPC, as we know, it's moving towards exascale computing. Uh, we're going to have like really, really large-scale simulations, and you know, these simulations will give really big outputs. Uh, you know, peta, peta scale outputs, and we need we need a very uh, we need a stable uh, sort of stack, software stack to analyze uh, you know the results of these simulations, and so. Uh, Hadoop is like the most popular framework for analytics, and Lustre is probably you know the file system of choice for you know at least 60 the top 60 uh, percent of the top 100 uh, HPC clusters. So you know there is you know there is definitely some convergence there. Uh, so and yeah so and one of the use cases that you know we uh, we sort of started out with was you know most HPC clusters uh, have diskless nodes. And uh, you know, HDFS is basically a layer on top of local disks. So without local disks, it's very difficult to make you know HDFS perform uh, reasonably. Mm. So yeah, this is how uh, this is how we made uh, Hadoop to run on Lustre. Uh, it uses a pluggable file system extension. Uh, it, it also has support for local file system. You know, any any POSIX compliant file system can run with Hadoop. So it, it was very simple. We just extended the uh, inbuilt classes and created our own Lustre file system class. Uh, defined a new URL scheme, so all uh, so all the all the files which are placed on Lustre will uh, will you know will be appended, will be prefixed with the Lustre uh, URI. Uh, and yeah, the file system will allow you to tune some of the Lustre uh, parameters like you know stripe striping information, you know, uh, just to. Uh, yeah, just to tune and get the right performance results. And yes, and you know, we've configured Hadoop to use Lustre. We just point, uh, there's, there's an XML parameter that you, know, you just point it to use the Lustre file system. So, so this, these are the essential details of the work we did. 
so the bottleneck in the, the main bottleneck in Hadoop is the shuffle phase. So what essentially happens is uh, the output of each mapper is is sorted. And then uh, the sorted output is actually divided into partitions. The number of partitions are equal to the number of reducers. So each partition is uh, streamed over HTTP to each reducer. Uh, if you are using cluster file system, which is essentially, you know, it's uh, it's a shared file system, and uh, you know the, out the the mapper outputs are actually available to all the reducers. So the HTTP phase becomes, uh, you know, the streaming phase becomes redundant. Uh, so we wanted to completely eliminate it. Uh, so uh, we, we eliminated it, but the, you know, the, the question was, what do we want to replace it with? Uh, so, so essentially, this is the working. So uh, you know, there is a servlet which, uh, which streams it over HTTP to each reducer. And you know, the output is basically a set, you know, a set of partitions uh, with in some indexing information there. So, uh, so yeah. So, you know, this is this is the biggest bottleneck in the operation of Hadoop. Uh, that's the shuffle phase. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, you know, how, how would how would we make the reducers actually access the map outputs? The first method we want we you know we thought of three methods. The first was you know let the reducers reach uh, you know read the partitions from the map outputs directly because it's a single indivisible file. So if each reducer starts reading, uh, you know, if you have multiple reducers trying to read from the same file, that will again create a bottleneck. And uh, you know, each reducer will also need the indexing information to know exactly which partition it needs to read. So there will be a lot of contention. You also, with, with indexing information, you also have a le level of indirection. So you need, uh, you, know, you need multiple reads to read a single partition. And, it's going to, and because the indexing information is really small, you know, just uh, 24 bytes of data. Each index record is just 24 bytes. So you know you're going to have a lot of very small uh, read operations, and you know Lustre is not very good at supporting very small, high frequency read operations. Uh, so the other the other way was you know just let the maps out you know dump it dump their outputs onto Lustre and make the servlet uh, convey just the indexing information. Uh, if you do that, you can actually cache the index files in memory. But uh, the problem is that the reducers will still have to seek uh, to the partition offsets in each of the map output files, and you also have, you, you also haven't uh, eliminated the HTTP redundancy, uh, you know the latency. Sorry. So, uh, so the second method that you know we finally we finalized on was uh, you know we made the mappers output each partition into a separate file, and the reducers uh, each reducer just knows which file it has to pick up and process it. So. Uh, so yeah, so no index files anymore. So we completely eliminated the index files. Uh, we don't need that. There'll be no disk seeks because you don't have to seek to the partition within any file. And we also completely eliminated uh, the need for HTTP streaming. So uh, it looks much simpler now. Uh, this is this is what we did. Um, you know, the mapper outputs each partition into a separate file, and then the reducer reads it. Uh, we ran some performance tests on it, uh, pretty small scale actually, just eight nodes, uh, eight, eight, eight Hadoop nodes actually, uh, four OSSs with four disks attached. We try, we tried to replicate, uh, you know, uh, to you know, to have a very fair comparison. Uh, we kept the number of disks the same, so each of the eight nodes have uh, two two SATA disks attached, so that makes a total of 16 disks, uh, and the same similar configuration for Lustre, uh, 16 disks. Uh, the first benchmark was, you know, just the test DFS I/O. Uh, it's like uh, test the distributed file system I/O benchmark. And this is this test the raw performance, just you know, complete uh, sequential read and write throughput. And you know, we we were sort of expecting this that you know, Lustre is going to outperform HDFS, which it did by almost uh, you know, it gave twice as much the performance of HDFS. But the main benchmark that you know we were really interested, in, which actually simulates a uh, typical uh, you know, map reduce workloads is the terasort. This this is what really stresses the uh, shuffle phase of Hadoop, and uh, it's it's essentially a distributed sort. The distributed sort is done by the framework itself, so you don't actually need to supply any map or reduce functions. You just uh, so the terasort program it just specifies it just supplies a custom partitioner, so it makes sure that you know the keys. Uh, the input keys are actually partitioned in such a way that each reducer gets more or less the same amount of data. 
and so and finally the you know the sorting is done by the framework itself so not much work there uh, and you know surprise so what we started out with was you know we wanted to even if we came up with performance which was equal to HDFS if Lustre performed as good as HDFS you know that would actually be a win but you know, to our surprise Lustre actually outperformed HDFS and you know that was you know that was a real surprise there and you know I'm really happy about it that you know it outperformed and this presents like a real you know it's it's an opportunity for uh, you know it's a two-way opportunity one is to get Hadoop into the HPC community and you know encourage the use of Hadoop for analyzing data and the other is to actually push Lustre into the enterprise community uh, you know uh, you know to uh, as you know as an alternative to the uh, Hadoop distributed file system so there's there's an opportunity there uh, so yeah, those were the results of our test, and you know, it's, it's basically work in progress. Uh, we haven't really finished it. Uh, we need more exhaustive testing with different configurations. Uh, we need to test at scale as well uh, because it was just eight nodes. So uh, although the results are encouraging, we really need to be thorough with the testing. So you know, maybe like thousand nodes or two thousand nodes. You know, that's the kind of testing we are looking forward to. Uh, Currently, the code was, uh, you know, it was uh, Hadoop, the Hadoop 1 release. Uh, so we use the internal uh, Intel Hadoop distribution. Uh, but right now, we have been porting it to the uh, Hadoop 3 release. So the advantage of using the Hadoop, uh, well, Intel Hadoop 3 is actually based on the Apache Hadoop 2. So the advantage of Hadoop 2 is that uh, it has, you know, it has sort of, uh, decouple the main framework components of scheduling and you can actually uh, supply your own shuffle plugin uh, and also a scheduling plugin so you know there's it's it's more plugin based more decoupled so it's easier to you know create your own customized components for it uh, and yeah there is some we also have some testing plan with you know other other tools in the Hadoop stack like hive pig uh, hbase you know these are these are basically uh, programs which run on top of Hadoop uh, and yeah, and for the work which you know we haven't really planned yet, but you know still just brainstorming over it, or uh, you know to to find out how it runs. Uh, that you know we saw talks about making Lustre work with uh, ZFS and how caching you know actually helps to optimize smaller reads. So you know that is something we want to try with uh, Hadoop running on Lustre. Uh, we also want to do some scheduling enhancements and see you know if it if it helps and make it more Lustre specific. Uh, and also, uh, you know, one of the things that Lustre doesn't do is it does not support the, uh, the programming model that, you know, Hadoop, the assumption that Hadoop works with is actually to move computation to data rather than to actually move data towards the computation. So, uh, you, know, you know, if there is some way of actually moving computation and, you know, performing the computations directly on the OSS nodes, uh, that, is, that is something also we want to try out in the future. So, yeah, that's about it. All right. Thank you.